I'm Steve Burkhardt from San Antonio, Texas, and I just want to show you a case where superior capsular reconstruction uh, provided a very unique solution for an unusual problem in a patient that had an irreparable cuff tear, but also a very unstable shoulder. This was a 41-year-old physical therapist, very active person whose hobbies are golf, scuba diving, and downhill skiing. In fact, six months earlier, he dislocated his left shoulder while downhill skiing. Since that time, he had a pseudoparalysis, and he said that his shoulder would sublux dozens of times per day. He was able to return to his job as a physical therapist, but he had to work one-handed and was concerned about the future of his job, which obviously was very physically demanding. His local surgeon had referred him to me for a possible ladder J reconstruction because his instability was so bad, but he also had this very massive cuff tear with a true pseudoparalysis. He had active elevation of only 20 degrees, whereas he had passive elevation of 160 degrees. He had very weak resisted external rotation, and he had a positive apprehension sign at a very low angle of just 45 degrees, indicating that he had an extremely unstable shoulder. You see his x-rays here on the AP. You can actually see his bony bank heart lesion. You can see it better on the axillary view, where he has a bony bank heart that has healed as a, as a bony alpsa in a medialized position. The 3D CT scan shows this perhaps a little bit better. You see it seems to be a rather large fragment, but it's medialized. Looking at his MRI scan, you can see that he has a massive rotator cuff tear. His uh, muscles look reasonably good in terms of their integrity, and it looks like if we could get some sort of a partial repair, that would help. But uh, he obviously uh, may not have a completely repairable tear. So here are our choices, whether to do an open ladder J plus open partial repair and open superior capsular reconstruction. And my concern there is that's a lot of open surgery, and I'm not so sure how well he would do with that. The arthroscopic option that I had in mind was an arthroscopic bank art repair combined with arthroscopic remplissage to aid in the stability and then to do an arthroscopic superior capsular reconstruction if we weren't able to obtain a complete repair. So here is the at surgery on his findings. You see that he's got a big uh, Hill Sachs lesion. He's got this big bony bank art that had to be mobilized. It had healed in a medialized position. Now we've mobilized that bony bank art just prior to fixation here. Looking from a posterior lateral portal, you see in this left shoulder, we're doing a posterior rotator cuff repair using a remplissage type of technique, insetting the posterior cuff into the Hillsax lesion. But as you can see, superiorly, his supraspinatus is not repairable at all. So we had to use a superior capsular reconstruction with dermal allograft to cover over the top. Here he is at one year post-op. You can see no instability problems now, no pseudoparalysis. He has excellent strength with resisted external rotation, as you can see. Internal rotation is good. No instability problems. He has no apprehension and abduction external rotation. He has regained all of his external rotation strength. Looking from the front, you can see how he raises the arms. Once again, no apprehension. He can do everything he wants to do. In fact, he's already made his reservations for his next downhill ski trip next winter. So you see what we've accomplished arthroscopically in this patient. We've restored his stability, we've restored overhead motion, and we've restored his strength with this arthroscopic procedure that includes a superior capsular reconstruction. So I would urge you to keep this uh, in your armamentarium because it can be very helpful in some of these combined types of problems that don't have a very easy solution otherwise. Thank you.